Bethesda Game Studios Few names in the video game industry are as well known and divisive amongst people as Bethesda. This company known for many things such as developing fan favorite games like the Elder Scrolls and Fallout series are also synonymous with fun and quirky things such as game breaking bugs and performance issues, paid mods, mediocre writing, but the child refused to follow the father's selfless example, and just being an overall PR nightmare. Bethesda has gained a reputation for promising one thing and delivering another. The next gen PC game, we really do push the technology. It features all new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. Game Spawning such classic phrases as, it just, just works. works. It's not, I'm not kidding. Don't worry though, modders will fix the game and Bethesda will try to monetize it. In recent years, they've become the figurehead for some of the most hyped yet somehow most mid-gaming experiences of the modern day, and say I'd like to take a look at that. How did this once beloved developer go from making critically acclaimed games such as Oblivion to telling users, um, actually you're wrong, our game isn't boring, you're just playing it wrong, in the Starfield reviews? Why is it that when Todd goes on stage to use his level 100 speech stat to tell us sweet little lies and show us a JPEG of Elder Scrolls 6, does everyone collectively hop on the hype train and ride it directly into Starfield's procedurally generated phallic-shaped moon? This video will be one part history lesson, one part partially informed rant, so take your seats and get ready. I'll be taking a brief look back at some history of the company, what led up to their recent releases, leading to my main complaints. Note that this is partially my opinion, so if you're a diehard Bethesda stan you may want to click off now before I start tearing into the lord and savior god Howard. With all of that out of the way, this is the sad state of Bethesda games. Let's start in the year of our lord 2001 with the founding of Bethesda Game Studios, Bethesda's in-house development team. Prior to this, Bethesda had no separation between its publishing and development sides, so in an attempt to grow the development end of the company, they branched off a small team of roughly 40 people into their own first party game studio, with the oh-so-charismatic Todd Howard at the helm acting as executive producer. At the time of me writing this, they've expanded to 450, which is still relatively low compared to most AAA developers. Anyway, during this time they developed The Elder Scrolls Morrowind. Running on the Gamebryo engine, take note of this, it'll be important later, the game was praised for its open-ended but detailed world design, allowing the player to tackle the game as they please. Due to this, its emphasis on RPG mechanics, and well-written story, it soon became a commercial and critical success, selling 200,000 units by September of that year. And to this day, it's widely considered one of the best Elder Scrolls by many. Sure, it still had some of that classic Bethesda charm, What say you? What say you? What say you? What say you? but it was a revolutionary game for its time. Fast forward to 2006 and the release of Oblivion. This is more of what people wanted, with a few quality of life touch-ups, but overall playing it very safe here. The RPG mechanics and other aspects were streamlined down to be less daunting for people not looking to read an instruction manual on leveling a character, or softlock their game by killing an essential quest NPC. Where this game did make some innovative strides is with the development of the Radiant AI system, which is basically just a system that dictates how NPCs behave in-game. The system was designed to make the AI have goals and schedules, and it allows for the game world to feel more alive and dynamic. This was partially made due to criticisms about Morrowind's NPC AI, not that this one is much better at times. Farewell. May you rest in peace. Aw, oh, gee. This is actually the same system they use in future games, just building upon it in later installments. It's a reoccurring theme with this company patchworking their older technology into newer versions, for better or worse which I'll get into shortly. You can also start to see Bethesda's method of monetization here too. To this day, Bethesda gets mocked for the infamous horse armor DLC, which for those who don't know is just cosmetic horse armor that was sold for $250 at launch. This is commonplace today in most games, but at the time people thought it was ridiculous, and oftentimes in articles that talk about this, they trace the microtransaction ridden hellscape that we live in now back to this, a trend that they would unfortunately try again later. 2008 gave us Fallout 3, Bethesda's next big hit. Todd, during an interview, slightly exaggerates the amount of endings in the game. How's that coming along, that part of the project? Um, being that we are Bethesda, um, <clears throat> everything gets a bit big, so as of last week, we're over 200 endings. That is not an exaggeration. But surely this would be the only time, right? Of course you can play this solo, alright? Anyway, selling nearly 5 million copies in its first week, the game was an almost instant success. I don't really have much to say about this one, because it was generally pretty good aside from some laughably bad writing at certain points. This won't be the end of it either and some issues with performance. Plus, without this game, we wouldn't have objectively the best game in existence. Fallout 3 walked so that New Vegas could run. 
The Mad Lads over at Obsidian saw Fallout 3 and said, hey, that's pretty cool, but we could make it even cooler. And so they did. And that's how on the seventh day, God gave us the best video game known to man, amen. Success after success, Bethesda was at the top of their game. Hailed as one of the best companies in AAA gaming, and looked upon fondly by most, they seemed like they could do no wrong and shit out gold forever. However, nothing lasts forever, and in the coming years, their fallout of grace would come gradually over the course of the next few titles. In 2011, Skyrim made its debut, and just like Smash Mouth said, it started coming and it won't stop coming, since we got re-releases in 2016, 2017, and 2021 for almost every platform imaginable. I've heard of Doom running on literally everything, but this is just getting ridiculous now. Something noteworthy here is the development of the Creation Engine, which is essentially just an updated version of the Gamebryo engine that they've been working with since the early days. Being based on the Gamebryo engine, that means it comes with all of the same old jank that you're used to, but with some all new jank as well. Despite that, Skyrim sold over 7 million units in its first week, which is nothing to scoff at, and while the world felt well crafted and the graphics were pretty, I do have some complaints. The plot wasn't great, it's the Bethesda go to, you're the chosen one, go fight the big bad guy. And while not necessarily bad, it's the same thing that we've seen before, and many people I know don't even bother with the main quest anyway. The game was sold as an action RPG, but the combat was kind of bare bones, and the RPG elements weren't very in depth. You didn't really have to pick a build to specialize in, since you could eventually become overpowered at every skill. For example, you make a stealth character, that just so happens to stumble upon the mage guild and become the leader of that, despite having the magical prowess of Plankton from that one episode of Spongebob. Generally, the combat boils down to just keep swinging your weapons and pounding cheese wheels until everything's dead. And that works for like 90% of the enemies. On top of that, the UI was not good and the dialogue didn't really matter. And I'm not saying that every game has to have New Vegas levels of branching dialogue, but a little more player choice would have been nice. This last one's more of a personal thing, but all of the dungeons felt like the same thing copy-pasted over and over, with a few exceptions. Typically, you grab a quest, go to some ruins, fight 69 Draugr, maybe solve a puzzle, loot, and repeat. This is a bit of an oversimplification, but take any dungeon screenshot and try and tell me the difference. These could all be personal gripes to me, and if you enjoyed the game, that's totally cool. But taking a critical look at it, there were some flaws. However, they weren't offensively bad until the next game in line. Also, edit. In the middle of me writing this, they added paid mods to Skyrim in the most recent update, which I think is just a fun feature to add for a decade-old single-player game. This is where most of my arguments come in, since it had the most egregious implementations of them. Similarly to the preceding game, the plot wasn't great, the dialogue was even worse at certain points, and now the skill and perk system has been dumbed down into basically nothing but stat boosts. And while that makes the game accessible to people who don't care much for RPGs, it also takes so much away from the core of the gameplay. Remember in 3 and New Vegas, where you'd pick a perk or invest points in a stat, and generally speaking it would do something unique for gameplay? That's gone, fuck you, no fun for you. Have 20% more healing from stim packs. Same with the dialogue system. Remember when having certain perks or skills gave you unique dialogue options? No more of that. Have a wheel with two flavors of yes, one for no, and maybe a question in there. Fallout was also marketed as an action RPG, but one that was streamlined down so much that it just made it a lukewarm experience. Bethesda had id Software, the people who made Doom and Wolfenstein, handle the gunplay, which is at least better now than previous games, as well as a few quality of life things like sprinting and having a button for grenades. Those were some of my few praises for the game, however it feels to me like every other generic open world first person shooter looter, just with a Fallout skin on top. And honestly, I'm kind of sick of every game trying to be that, but that's a topic for another day. Streamlining all these elements down, in my opinion, took away what made Fallout interesting to begin with, and while there's a few side quests here and there that were interesting or had some neat concepts, it was few and far between. Gone are the days that you can approach a quest in any way you want. You will go to this dungeon, you will shoot everything in sight, you will loot some stuff and come back. On that note, I couldn't really find myself invested with the main plot, as all the factions were just boring one-note characters, which generally isn't how things work. Much like the real world, there's a lot of grey area, and that's what makes characters interesting and worth getting invested in. Going back to New Vegas, each faction had pros and cons, and you could choose who you side with based on your own personal beliefs. Having nuanced characters isn't necessary, but I think it adds a nice layer of complexity. The best villains are the ones that you can relate to, not just comically bad for the sake of bad. This one also had the shitty paid mods, which in their defense are mostly cosmetic and funny enough, they added horse power armor as a nod to the horse armor in Oblivion. Acknowledging it doesn't make it any less sad, but at least it's kind of funny. Some areas ran atrociously bad, and the building system that they hyped up hardly worked. Basically making the game run well and be somewhat enjoyable takes tons of tinkering and modding until it's an entirely different game. Anyway, we have to move on or I'll sit here nitpicking Fallout 4 all day. Next up is somehow even worse than this. 
I'm not going to talk in a ton of detail about this since everyone online already has, so I'm only going to briefly go over a few things. If you want a more in-depth look, Internet Historian made a very comprehensive video about it a few years ago, so check that out. In 2018, Todd goes on stage to announce the next Fallout game. Many people were hyped for it, and as he stands there lying through his shiny, perfect teeth about the game, touting the size of the map and the fidelity of its graphics, and finally finishing by saying it's a multiplayer game. And it's our biggest one yet. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. To have 16 times the detail. Yes, Fallout 76 is entirely online. Which, if you're B, is an immediate red flag. Since the series has always been a single player experience, arbitrarily making it multiplayer doesn't really add anything. Especially since it still runs on the creation engine, which hardly worked for single player, let alone multiplayer. More on that in a minute. On top of that, I feel that the multiplayer aspect kind of makes the world less immersive. But to incentivize the oh-so-important multiplayer, the game launched without NPCs. A series known for its vast amount of NPCs and dialogue launches without NPCs. Who in the chain of command at Bethesda thought that this was acceptable? It took him two whole years of bitching and ridicule from people online to finally add him back in 2020. The map was fairly extensive, but there was really no reason to visit most places, as the content there just wasn't that interesting. The game was riddled with bugs and performance issues, which I'll put some funny clips of here. And they just gave up on trying to make skills good and said, fuck it, here's some RNG cards for perks. The quest lines were boring, and on top of all of it, they tried their hardest to monetize a game that you already had to pay full price for, which they are currently still doing. At the time of me writing this, many features are essentially locked behind the Fallout 1st subscription, which you can purchase for $13 a month, or $100 a year, on top of it still being somehow a $40 game. You guys want a single player Fallout? Better subscribe then. If you choose not to line Todd's pockets, you're limited in many ways in the game, the biggest being item storage, but also cosmetics and smaller things like that. There's also been reports of users' negative reviews being taken down on Steam, which I can't confirm or deny, so for the sake of this video, I'll post one to see if it gets taken down. I'll keep y'all posted on Twitter or YouTube community tab or something about it. While the game is in a much more finished state now than it was a few years ago, it's still not comparable to the single-player games. Yes, even Fallout 4, for as much as I thought it was a downgrade to the previous ones, is still a better experience than this. This brings us to now, with their only new IP in almost two decades that everyone is excited for. Starfield. The space game, as they called it. With their previous launches being as good as they were, this one would have to be pretty stellar, right? You're part of Constellation now. Part of our family. Well, the game launched to most reviews claiming it to be incredibly dull and lifeless, with uninteresting exploration and slow and clunky combat. Starfield ended up being Fallout 4 in space, but with even less interesting things populating the world. The game was made on the new and improved Creation Engine 2, which Todd explained significantly improves the graphics and AI, with the biggest improvement being procedurally generated content. I don't know all the ins and outs of the engine, however it doesn't seem like it really improved things that much. It still has all the same game mechanics from two decades ago, with the same lobotomized AI from the previous games, and the same combat. Nothing feels new, and while that isn't a bad thing for everyone, I figured there would be more changes from this game that they hyped up so much. For comparison, take the difference between Valve's Source Engine 1 and 2. The latest game developed on it was Half-Life Alex and that CSGO port that's in the works. Both of which look better in graphics and lighting, and have updated features to the previous engine, while still maintaining that familiar look. That's how you update an engine for the modern day. On top of all of the run-of-the-mill Bethesda gameplay, the game is, by many user accounts, a loading screen simulator that suffers from poor optimization. Despite Todd's best claims that it isn't. I'll play that clip now, don't worry, there's a mod to fix that. Why did you not optimize this game for PC? Uh, we did. It's running great. It is a next-gen PC game. We really do push the technology, so you may need to upgrade your PC for this game, but it's got a lot of great stuff going on in it, and the fans are responding awesome. That's not the only negative PR with this game. As of late, they've begun responding to negative reviews of the game, basically telling users that they're playing the game wrong, or refuting the emptiness of their worlds with, well, actual space is pretty empty too, which, yes, that's probably true. But if I'm playing an action sci-fi space game, I don't expect realism so much as I expect something entertaining. In essence, the game isn't so much bad as it is forgettable and uninspired, and I don't know if that's better or worse than just being plain old bad. It seems like one of those games everyone's going to forget about in the coming years unless they take the No Man's Sky route and just continually add content and updates to it. And for a company with such prestige as Bethesda, I just expected better. So what can we expect for the future? Well, with mediocre game after mediocre game, it really doesn't fill me with hope for the next Elder Scrolls or Fallout game, and that's sad. These titles once hype me up because they have a level of immersion that you don't find all the time. The grandiose feeling of exploring a massive world with tons of things to discover, or building a character that suits your specific playstyle, 
and completing quests using your specific strengths feels really unique and fulfilling. Even Fallout 76 for a time, I enjoyed just wandering the world and seeing all the little details and areas, as well as the unique enemies. That was kind of fun. Bethesda seems out of touch, and in their attempts to appeal to everyone, they end up making an extremely lukewarm experience. It's just my opinion, but if I were to offer advice, I would say to scale back the scope, stop making these massive worlds with nothing in them, and craft a smaller, more detailed experience. The earlier entries had things to explore hidden around every corner, and that was some of the biggest draws for me. And two, to stop streamlining the games and trying to appeal to everyone, because generally when you try and do everything well, you just end up doing nothing well. People who like shooters will go play any number of better ones, and people who like RPGs are gonna go back to playing Balding Gay. Alright, I'm done complaining for today. Roll the outro. Thanks for checking out this video. I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments. What do you think of Bethesda's games? I'm not sure everyone's gonna agree with my takes here, which is totally fine. Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Most of you guys seem to really like the last rant style video that I did, as it's still my most popular video on the channel by a long shot. And while I don't exclusively want to be known as one of those rant YouTube people that just makes videos to shit on things, they're fun to do every so often. If this one's well received, maybe I'll make it into a series and do one or two of these a year. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. I do have a few potential ideas. Also, Jakey made a video that covers a lot of the same things recently, which I found out about after this was already mostly written, and while I didn't intend for that to happen, it was a fun coincidence, so definitely check that out, he makes amazing content. Finally, if you've stuck here for this long, I just want to say thank you, it really means a lot. If you want to like the video and subscribe, that helps me out immensely. But that's all for now, have a good one, and I'll see you next time.